Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Attorney John Deaton has written up uh, the rather insightful th Twitter thread that I want to share with you in this video, uh, which he titled, Why the SEC vs. Ripple Case is the Most Significant SEC Case in Modern History. And this is part one of, of two. Uh, part two is he's not yet written up yet, but I want to share this with you. Uh, you know, look, in, in running this channel... I, I want to use my platform to prop up those XRP community members that are contributing in meaningful ways. And so I just want to say, if, if you've not yet done so, if you have a Twitter account, you should definitely follow attorney John Deaton. He is at John, that's his first name, J-O-H-N, middle initial E, and then the last name Deaton, which is D-E-A-T-O-N, and then the number one. And, uh, and there you can see this is his official account right here. Uh, you will not regret it. He puts out all sorts of interesting stuff. I, um, I, I see him in, uh, in my, uh, my Twitter feed all the time. And it's, it's, just, it's really fascinating. And I, um, I really appreciate getting perspective for somebody that does have a legal background. Because for someone like me that just doesn't come from something like that, it's been difficult without insight such as his to get a handle on exactly what's going on with this SEC case versus Ripple. But he's been of tremendous uh, importance for the entire XRP community. And there are a number of attorneys that have been contributing. Uh, we're just going to be highlighting this in this particular video, though. Now, I also do want to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write, okay? I'm just an enthusiast in the space, and I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. So let's dig into this now. You guys are going to love this. In 1946, the U.S. Supreme Court handed down the seminal case of SEC versus Howie. For 75 years... That case has basically set the standard in determining what constitutes a security. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the underlying asset in Howie was orange groves. The groves were plots of land that were sold to tourists. The investors purchased the lots of land, but also paid the seller money to manage the orange groves. The seller would plant the seed, water the trees, harvest the oranges, and then sell the oranges to people and places and the investors would share in the profits. The Supreme Court laid out a four-factor test that is now called the Howey test in deciding whether an asset is an investment contract, also known as a security. The Howey test comprises of four factors, and all four factors must be met in order to classify the asset as a security. Those factors are as follows. Number one, a person must invest money. Two, in a common enterprise. Three, the person is led to expect profits and four, from the sole efforts of others. The Supreme Court, in applying the four factors, concluded that the orange groves were securities because the investors did nothing. They never visited the land, never procured the trees, never took possession of the oranges or did anything except invest money and wait for profits. After Howey, there have been a progeny of cases wherein the four-factor test was applied. Some of the highlighted assets included oil drilling rigs, whiskey barrels, beavers, and payphones. In all these cases, like in Howey, the investor gave money, sat back, and collected the profits. In all of these situations, the investors did nothing and relied solely on the efforts of the promoter or seller, so all the assets were deemed a security. Please think about this for a minute. One of the cases involving securities laws that we must apply in analyzing whether XRP or digital assets constitute securities involves facts and technology related to payphones. When is the last time you used a payphone? It's insane and idiotic that innovative companies must guess and try to compare orange, orange groves and payphones to blockchain technology and digital currency. Yeah, and that's something that I've, I've talked about too. It's just this idea of attempting to shoehorn this brand new technology into this existing legal framework. The reason it's so messy is because it doesn't work. It, it absolutely doesn't work. There was no such thing as an asset 
that could be centralized and then become decentralized and vice versa. Nothing like that existed prior to this, okay? Now it does exist, and you're trying to shoehorn that, that new animal into this existing framework. Frankly, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work here. You know, it's like, what do they say, uh, round peg square hole? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that works so well. But uh, anyway, John's thread continues. We need Congress to act, but that's like waiting for the ground to dry during a hurricane. We need congressional action for not only providing clarity related to the digitalization of different assets, but also authorizing and or limiting which federal agencies should um, should Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, uh, Stuart Alderody, and David Schwartz. Um, did, did I just... Oh, I'm sorry. I just switched... <laughs> I don't know why my eyes did that. I apologize. Let me start over with that sentence. We need congressional action for not only providing clarity related to the digitalization of different assets, but also authorizing and or limiting which federal agency should govern the use of digital currency. When Congress fails to act, we need leadership at the SEC to provide regulatory clarity. Ripple has begged for such clarity for the last several years. Hell, Hester Pierce is begging for it now. And by the way, Hester, Hester Pierce, uh, she is an SEC commissioner, mind you. Uh, while executives like Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, Stuart Alderody, and David Schwartz were pleading for regulatory clarity in, uh, in America the last three and a half years, the rest of the world joined the 21st century as it relates to the digitalization of assets. The UK's Financial Conduct Authority, which is the FCA for short, uh, unlike the SEC, provides clear guidance to investors and businesses regarding crypto assets and digital currencies. Uh, the FCA has stated that crypto fits into several brackets. A, a security token, B, a utility token, and C, an exchange token. A security token is like a stock certificate or debt instrument. It provides title rights to a company. A utility token is designed for a specific purpose. An exchange token is traded on platforms for value in something. The FCA declared XRP to be a hybrid token, constituting both a utility and exchange token. The FCA specifically determined that XRP is not a security token. In addition, Japan, Singapore, Switzerland, and the UAE have all also declared XRP to be a non-security. This is of great significance when you consider that over 80% of XRP is traded outside the United States. Yeah, which, which by the way, is good news at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys have thought about this. Given the nonsense that's happened in the United States here, the fact that the vast majority of XRP is traded outside the United States is of paramount importance because, like, just, like obviously the price cratered after the scary SEC news. Um, thankfully, not down to the lows we saw in March of 2020, where it got down to like 11 cents or something like that. But still... If, 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 if a substantial portion of the trading were in the United States and this happened, oh my gosh, I don't even want to imagine what the XRP price would look like. It would, it would uh, you know, I'll imagine it. What the hell? It would probably look like it was like 2015 or something like that. It'd be worth about half a penny or something like that. But no, I don't know how low it would have gone, but uh, it, it would have been truly devastating, substantially lower than it is now. Um, but, but thankfully, so much of the trading is outside the United States. And, and consider this. Uh, you know, Coinbase didn't even have XRP listed during the last market cycle, and a vast majority of the trading, again, done outside the United States, so it was people outside of the United States that really caused the price of XRP to rally up to almost $4, and, and look, they're still out there speculating. There's no way to know for sure what's going to happen, but they are still out there speculating. Uh, that's worth remembering. Anyway, his third continues here, though. Garland House has stated that 95% of Ripple's customers are outside the United States. It's not like we can say this 20% of circulating XRP acts as a security, while the other 80% is a hybrid token acting as both a bridge asset utility token and or an exchange token. It's an utter disgrace that Clayton, acting chair uh, Allison Heron Lee, uh, and SEC, the SEC waited eight years to bring this incredibly significant enforcement action. Previously, I brought up the fact that Jed McCaleb wasn't sued. Now, Jed McCaleb, let me pause there. I'm sure most of you know, but there's always new people coming into the world of crypto and XRP and Ripple. Uh, Jed McCaleb is a co-founder of Ripple, no longer with the company. He had a falling out after being there for, I don't know, a year or two, whatever it was. And he went on to start uh, the, the, uh, Stellar 
which uh, the, the cryptocurrency called Lumens. Again, I'm sure most of you know this, but there's always some people that don't. But uh, Jed McCaleb is actually the guy that came up with the idea for XRP. He just basically wanted to build a better Bitcoin. And so that's uh, that's where it all started. But anyway, continuing on. So we brought up the fact that Jed McCaleb wasn't sued. Uh, more important, the SEC hasn't sought an injunction to prevent him selling his billions of XRP. If the SEC filed this case to protect investors, they wouldn't let Jed continue his daily dumps of XRP, which means this enforcement action was brought for the improper motives that I previously explored, or the SEC doesn't know how to deal with digital currencies and filed this case as a means to achieve regulation by enforcement. SEC vs. Ripple is the most significant SEC enforcement action in modern history, period. How do I know that? Let's review only a few items. PayPal CEO Dan Shulman publicly stated that digital currencies are the future of finance and money. PayPal announced that in 2021, it will allow for crypto assets to provide the funding source for retail purchases to its 28 million merchants. Recently, MasterCard went even further. After the need for relief caused by the pandemic, central bank digital currencies are the most significant financial topic in the world today. Uh, China's President Xi has, uh, has urged world leaders to support central bank digital currencies. Japan accelerated a rollout of the digital yen and central bank digital currency. Canada announced it will soon launch a central bank digital currency. The Bank of England says digital currencies may replace the bank's role in payments altogether. The ECB said losing in the central bank digital currency race will have significant consequences. PayPal CEO stated there is no doubt people are flocking to digital currencies and central bank digital currencies will be the future and there is no doubt that central bank digital currencies will be issued directly by central banks to people. Yeah, so that, that, let me pause right there. He's he, That's correct. And it is, when we get to this point, it is going to change in a fun, from a fundamental perspective uh, you know, the role of a bank. And so I'm not one of these Bitcoin maxis that say that I want or think uh, that banks will go away. I don't want it to happen, and I don't think that will happen. It's, there's just going to be an evolution. They're going to do different, different things. What, what are what, you know, Here's a new thing they could do. And legally, they can do this now, thanks to the OCC. Uh, they can custody cryptocurrencies for those that don't want to hold them. Because cryptocurrencies, I'm talking about decentralized cryptocurrencies, not central bank digital currencies. Uh, they absolutely uh, will, will be doing that. And then, you know, there's always going to be uh, a centralized entity offering loans. I don't know that that's all going to be, you know, decentralized and you no longer need some sort of central entity to, just to get a loan. Uh, that would be an interesting future. Maybe it's possible. I just, I doubt that's going to be the case. And so there, there'll be things they can do. It's just banks are going to have to adapt to the future, frankly. And as far as central bank digital currencies, it's also worth noting, uh, and, and John Deaton is absolutely correct in highlighting all of this stuff. Uh, also worth noting, though, that really central bank digital currencies are just a new form of fiat currency, which is already digital. So like we're calling them new central bank digital currencies. But again, the currencies today are 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 digital already yeah there's paper money fine there's metallic currency oh coins i hate coins so much swear to god if i have to stand behind another 80 year old lady putting nickels and pennies down when i'm at the grocery market mm, really grinds my gear so let's get rid of metallic currency right but uh you know it's it, understand that whether it's the current digital version of the united states dollar or there's a new central bank digital currency version of it where you just you, you actually have a digital wallet and it's it's technologically different understand that even though to, to me that seems inevitable you're going to you still have the same underlying monetary policy which is why it, it doesn't eliminate the need for decentralized cryptocurrencies that have a completely different governing governance systems that have um, that have you know finite supplies that are verifiably so you know that, that that's not going to change if anything it's just going to increase the adoption of decentralized cryptocurrencies when you have a wallet that can hold a central bank digital currency and XRP and Bitcoin and pick your cryptocurrency, that's just going to onboard people to more decentralized cryptocurrencies faster, I think. So that's the future that I see coming ultimately here. But um, anyway, let me continue on with what uh, what uh, John's uh, John typed up here in his thread. Um, here we go. A top Japanese banker said digital currency development is the top priority and that Japan is behind China and South Korea. The head 
of Russian parliaments for financial markets stated that the crypto ruble will start in 2021. Bank of America reported that the Federal Reserve will use digital dollars to unleash inflation, provide UBI and debt forgiveness. China has already created a central bank-backed digital currency and has been using it for months in select Chinese cities. Uh, Deutsche Bank released a report about China issuing the first central bank digital currency and states that it is now a step closer to its goal of removing the United States dollar as the world's reserve currency. A top Russian banker declared SWIFT to be replaced by digital currencies. DBS, Singapore's largest bank and the sixth largest bank in the world, declares XRP is better and faster than SWIFT. Do you know how long SWIFT has been in power? What company has been the only company trying to replace SWIFT? Now, why exactly did the SEC sue Ripple? This case has huge implications. Part two later. And I'll be sure to cover part two as, uh, as, as soon as he, he puts that out into the wild here. Yeah, and so as, as far as the, the actual motives here, I'm not going to speculate in this particular video, but we have talked about that a, a bit in the past, and John has been willing to speculate. And as he cited in the past, I think it's perfectly fair. You know, it's just, these actions are so absurd. How could you not just try and logically think through what might be the case? And so I think some speculation on this front is perfectly reasonable, even if we're never going to know uh, what's in the hearts and minds of these people that made this unfortunately actually happen. But uh, can you imagine, you know, all of this against the, the backdrop of central bank digital currencies, this technological revolution, changing the way money moves around the planet, the SEC, can you imagine them actually, you know, adjudicating all of this and then XRP being declared a, an actual security and then Ripple has to leave the United States and then the, the United States is left behind and then the, the technological advancements happen elsewhere. And then the precedent this would set, like this would just be devastating, not just for XRP, but for uh, pretty much every cryptocurrency on the planet. And so I just, I'm, that's why I'm optimistic. I don't think that this is going to go down. I don't think that the SEC, uh, you know, once this goes through the court, I just, I can't imagine. I mean, there could be bad law, fine, but I don't suspect that's going to be the case. There's a reason, many, many reasons that I'm thoroughly optimistic here. But in the meantime, what a train wreck we're dealing with here. So anyway, I say bravo to John Deaton. And again, if you've not yet followed him on Twitter, I strongly encourage you to check him out. You will not regret it. But um, I will go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.